Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at linear inequalities. So remember, an inequality means that the left side and the right side of an equation are not equal. So actually, it's not called an equation, but it's called an inequality. We can use inequalities to model a situation that can be described by a range of numbers instead of just a single number. So when we solve an equation, we end up having x is equal to a single number. Now with an inequality, we actually get a range of numbers. We use specific symbols to show this. So when one quantity is greater or equal to another quantity, we use the symbol that looks like this. So greater means that on the left side here, we have the bigger opening. So it's greater than or equal to. The line underneath shows that it's equal to. When one quantity is greater than the other quantity, we now write just the greater than, but we don't include the line underneath. When one quantity is less or equal to the other quantity, then we have a less than symbol with a line underneath to show that it's also equal to. And again, on this left side of the inequality symbol, notice that this side here is smaller, so it's less. When one quantity is less than the other quantity, we just show the less than symbol, but we don't write the equal to part. And then finally, when one quantity is not equal to the other quantity, we write an equal sign, and then we put a slash through it to say that these two values are not equal. Being able to translate written inequalities is important in problem solving. So let's take a look at some common phrases to look for when translating written inequalities into mathematical statements. So when we see a less than or less than or equal to, we want to look for words such as at most or no more than which means that we've already reached the max, so it's going to be a less than symbol. Uh, we have below, and we also have maximum. And I'm sure there are other phrases as well, but when you see these four phrases, you're always going to use the less than or the less than or equal to, depending on what the um, inequality or the phrase states. For the greater or greater than or equal to, we have the opposite of at most, which is at least. no less than, above, or a minimum. So let's take a look at how to translate the following uh, phrases into an inequality. So here the first one is a number, so we're going to call that m. And it says is greater than. So the is greater than means that the number n is going to be greater than the number 7. The second one, it says you must lose at least 20 pounds. So at least. So that means you want to lose more than 20 pounds. So then n has to be greater or equal to 20. So at least means that we can lose 20 but we want to lose more than 20. So n is greater or equal to 20. For C, you cannot buy more than one kilogram of chocolate to get the discount. So that means that if you spend more than one kilogram, you're not going to get the discount. So you cannot buy no more than. So n, this time, is going to be less than or equal to one. So if you buy more than one, then you're not going to get the discount. So you can buy one or less. All right, the very last one, the contestant must be less than 18 years old. This is a straightforward one. Less than, so N, our contestant, has to be less than 18. Let's take a look at more about inequalities. Now, while a linear equation is true for only one value, of the variable. A linear inequality may be true for many values of the variable. So equation only has one value, but an inequality has many. Now the solution of an inequality is any value of the variable that makes the inequality true. 
Because there are usually too many numbers to list, we may show these numbers on a number line. So let's take a look at an example. Is each number a solution of the inequality x is greater or equal to negative 3? And justify the answers. So method one, we're going to take a look at um, using a number line. So our inequality is x is greater or equal to negative 3. So we're going to circle negative 3, and because it's equal to, we're going to actually color this dot in as well. Greater 2 means going to the left, because all the numbers bigger than negative 3 satisfy the equation. So now looking at the five different examples, does negative 6, is that included in our shaded area on our arrow? So negative 6 is not. So negative 6 is not included. So therefore, negative 6 is not a solution. Negative 2.5 on our number line, that would be right here. And it is part of our line that we've shaded. So B, negative 2.5, is included. And then we can go on to negative 3. Negative 3 is right here. And it is shaded already, so negative 3 is also included. 3 is right over here, and that also is included in our number line, so 3 is included. And then finally, E for 0, 0 is right here, and that also is part of our shaded number line. So 0 is also included. Now the other thing that we can do is take each of these numbers negative 6 to, and to up to 0, and we substitute in for x to see if that inequality is true. So for example, for a, we're going to go negative 6 is greater or equal to negative 3. So since that is not true, that's false, that's why negative 6 doesn't work. For b, we have negative 2.5 is greater or equal to negative 3. Yes, that is true. So actually, I'm going to write true. So I'll put a little check mark. C is negative 3 greater or equal to negative 3. Now it's not greater than negative 3, but it is equal to. So the inequality is greater or equal to. And it is equal, so that is true. And that's correct. So D, we have 3 is greater or equal to negative 3. So a positive number is greater than a negative number. So again, this one is true. And then the very last one, is 0 greater or equal to negative 3, and 0 is bigger than a negative number. So this one is true, and we put a check mark for this one as well. Next, let's take a look at how to graph inequalities. Let's take a closer look at how to graph inequalities. When graphing less than or greater than, the number is not a part of the solution because it doesn't have that line or the equal line underneath in the bottom. So when we graph these, inequalities, we draw a hollow or an open circle. When graphing less than or equal to, or greater or equal to, because it does have that line underneath, the number is a part of the solution. So we draw a solid circle, or we color it in. So let's take a look at some examples. So graph the statements on the number line and get four numbers that are solutions of the inequality. So we have t is greater than negative 3. So we're going to circle on the number line negative 3 and because it doesn't have a la uh, sorry it doesn't have a line underneath we don't color it in. So t is greater that means we want numbers that are greater than negative 3. So we're going to draw a line pointing to the right cuz all of these numbers are greater than negative 3. And then we're going to draw an arrow at the end to show that this number line or all the values greater than negative 3 um, keep increasing, and so all the numbers, even past 5, satisfy this inequality. So some numbers that would work would be t can be negative 2, can be negative 1, it could even be 1.5 or 3. So any number that is greater than negative 3 would satisfy this inequality. All right, next we have 2 is greater or equal to x. So we can circle the number 2 on the number line. We're going to color it in because it has a line underneath which shows that it equals 2. Now notice that this inequality 
um, has the X written on the right side. So if you like, you can actually switch it um, so that it is on the left side, such as X is less than or equal to two. Now the inequality still opens up toward the two, so we didn't change the meaning. But what it's saying is that we want numbers which are smaller or equal to two. Two is the bigger number. So this time we're going to draw an arrow, and this time it's going to be pointing to the left. And again, I'm going to keep drawing it all the way past or negative five, and then draw an arrow. So numbers x that would work would be one, zero, negative one, negative 1 1.5, and so on. All right, let's take a look at another one. So here we have a fraction. So we have negative 19 thirds is less than y. So I like to have my variable on my left side. So I'm going to rewrite this as y is greater than negative 19 over 3. So negative 19 over 3, it's a kind of maybe hard to see and visualize. So we're going to change it to a mixed number. So it's going to be negative 6 and 1 third. So on the number line, that is approximately right here. And we want the y values, or our variable, to be bigger than this number here. So we're going to circle negative 19 thirds, and we're going to draw an arrow pointing to the right. And we can keep going all the way. So values that would work for y would be negative 6, negative 5, 0, and 1. So if you look and you notice where these inequalities are pointing, they're kind of like arrows. And the arrow actually points in the same direction as our arrow in the number line. So this is pointing to the right. Notice our arrow is pointing to the right. If I scroll back, here I have x is less than or equal to 2. And notice that I have my arrow pointing to the left. And the very first question, I have t is greater than... Notice that this inequality is pointing to the right, and on my number line, it is also pointing to the right. So taking a look at the very last question, this one's quite different. So you must have 10 items or less to use the express line at the grocery store. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna actually label my number line from zero to 10. So you can do that as well. So try to space it out as best that you can and make it even and we'll number from zero to actually I can go all the way up to 12. So here it says you must have 10 items or less to use the express lane at the checkout. So this means that we are allowed x to be less than or equal to because we can't have 10 items 10. So we're going to color in 10 and nine and eight, and we can color it all the way down to one. But we can't include the numbers in between because they don't make sense. So this problem contains what we call discrete data, since only whole numbers are permitted. So this time, decimals or fractions are not included due to the situation. And this really only happens with word problems. So we're gonna represent it on a number line by putting a solid, or you can say a colored in circle, on each included possible numbers. And this is how we graph linear inequalities.